Okay, it looks like we're live. Hello, hello. How's my volume today? I didn't get a chance to check out my mic because my phone needed charging and the mic has to plug into the outlet. So, anyway, I'm Mr. Tie-Dye. Welcome to Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye. I'm glad to see you guys here. It looks like we already have some people waiting in the chat room. So, hello out to Becky in Omaha and tie-dye with Ernie and dog universe oh it looks like you're getting supplies in a few days that's awesome you'll love these new colors Alice ML Tuck Gwen Kettle Monster hello hello glad to see everybody joining me looks like the numbers are going up we got 33 people watching at this point 34 so today I'm gonna do a tie-dye Sun tapestry I've done those in the past but I've kind of had some new ideas and uh, I'm going to do at least one, possibly two, depending on how long this thing goes and how long you guys want to hang out. So i got a couple tapestries prepped here. Um, oh, but before we get to that, let's go ahead and talk about the auction. So today we're going to have three different tapestries for auction. Number one, number two, number three, just in the order that I tied and dyed them. So, and I think the easiest, less confusing way to do this is if we start with uh, just one tapestry at a time and we'll let it run for I don't know 20 minutes or something uh, before I'm before we close out I'll give everybody another chance to bid but these are the wild spiral type tapestries that I dyed last Wednesday and this one here is number one this is the one that I put the dies on starting from the center and I worked out in just the little tiny line shapes but not number two is the one where I did the line straight across, not that one. This one I started in the center and went out like in the little bitty pie shapes. So anyways, we're going to open up the bidding on Wild Spiral number one. And that's this one here. And of course, there's pictures posted over on Facebook. Uh, so you guys can see it and find it over there, the whole thing. But this here is tapestry number one. So we'll go ahead and open the bidding on this. And I'll try to keep up with that as we go. But on the other hand, let's go ahead and get started on our tapestry here. So what I have here is a tapestry blank that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out so it's just barely damp. And then I folded it into quarters. So I folded it in half and then folded it in half again the other way. And I marked my center spot right here with a little blue dot. That's something that you definitely need to keep track of where your center is. Uh, sometimes you can get folded up and then accidentally start off of the wrong side here. And what that's just going to do is put your sun or your mandela coming off of the side. And if you grab the one with the loops on it, then you're going to have your mandela be over in the corners. So anyways... If you just put a little dot on the center then you can make sure that you know where that's at so we're gonna flip this around here and I'm gonna go ahead and and I folded it in quarters mostly so that I could find the center oops let me get that okay because I wanted to find the center of where my tapestry was because we're gonna need that I'm gonna mark a, an angle on here and we got a question that says, what does spin out mean? So what I do is I soak these in soda ash, and then I usually will kind of wring them out a little bit by hand, and then I put it into my washing machine, and I set the cycle to spin. And then that will spin all of the excess out so that the tapestry is just barely damp. I can't wring enough of it out by hand, so I do that in the washing machine. The main thing to check is that your washer, uh, some washers will spit water, during the spin cycle but usually that's just at the beginning so if yours does that just make sure you kind of set the cycle about halfway through and check it again to make sure no water spray in and then you can put your tapestry in there if you do have water spray on it is going to dilute the soda ash which then is going to affect how the dye bonds with it so hope that was clear I'm trying a new setup here with my computer and give myself more space here but now I'm knocking my mouse around so maybe I'll set it over here for now okay so here's my center spot I'm gonna mark this line again on this front side so there's my center so what I'm going to do is fold this into thirds so and you can fold it however you like I like thirds because I can still do a nice fold on it from there if you get too many layers it's harder to do the folds that I want to do 
And it looks like we got our first bid for $40 for tapestry number one. Thank you, Camellia. Okay, so what I'm going to do is line up my protractor here. And I'm going to put a mark at 60 degrees. And that's going to be the angle that allow me to fold this into thirds. So I usually put my mark on there and then I pull out my handy dandy yardstick. And I lay the tapestry out nice and flat. Oh, well now I'm just moving things around all over the place. There we go. Okay, let's put the mouse back there. Okay. So here's my angle at 60 degrees. So what I'm just going to do is extend that out with my washable marker here. The brand that I use are Crayola brand. And I've also found Crazy Art. Those are the two brands I usually find either in the stores or on Amazon. And both of those have worked really good for me. Of course, they only last so long. When you're drawn on a soda ash t-shirt or tapestry, it wears the, the markers out faster. But I buy them in the big pack. So washable markers are definitely a handy tool. So from here now, what you can do is fold your line over So, uh, <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is fold this edge, so I, this here is the center of the tapestry, this here is the middle where I folded it in half, and now so I'm going to take this edge and line it up right on my 60 degree line here. So you can just kind of pinch it right here where you made your mark, and then line that up as straight as you can and I usually need a bigger table to work on but doing the videos here I have to stay small on this little space that's why I moved my computer back onto another little table to give myself a little more room okay so once you get everything all straightened out then I'm just gonna fold this other edge and lay it right here and it should line up right there along my crease So, and then I can usually pick it up, shake it out, and then I just like to kind of feel and make sure that I don't have any extra creases in there. And then the other thing I like to do is just know where the edge of my tapestry is. So over here, it's sitting on top, so I can see that, but on this side here, let's see if I can get that in the screen. Okay, yeah, you guys can see that. So I just feel under here and I feel the edge of my tapestry. So now I know where that is. And that's just going to assist when I'm putting my lines on here. So usually what I like to do is just kind of measure out, see how much space I have. Uh, I got about 27 and a half inches. So I think what I'm going to do is make my sun, I'm going to mark that at 10 inches, which is going to give me a 20 inch sun when this is all the way opened up. So I'm going to put one mark on my tapestry at 10 inches. And then, let's see. Yeah, we'll figure out the, the rays in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that line on to start with. And let's see, we got a few more bids. I better keep track of what's going on here. Okay. Okay, let's see. Wait a second. Multitasking. Okay, we have a bid of 50 and then a bid of 55. And let's see. I get all kerfuffled mid-fold of even just t-shirts. <laughs> yes, that happens. That's why sometimes making a little mark to, to make sure you know where your parts are is a good thing to do. So, I 
Okay. So what I do for my circles is I usually just tie a little slip knot into my string, whether it's my string or my sinew. And then you just hook that onto your marker. And then from there, I just put my finger down right at the point where the center of my circle is and just extend my string out until it's right at my line there at 10 inches. Once I have that, then I can just hold my pin nice and straight and just run right around and that gives me my uh, part of a partial circle there. So that's going to be the size of the sun and then we're going to put the rays on. So that's the next thing I'm going to figure out here. So I just usually kind of eyeball it and just decide how big I want something in the moment. So the rays, I'm going to make one set of the rays big and one a little bit shorter. So they're going to be two different size rays. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this. You could measure that, but I'm going to bring both of them down to that center spot there. So the first set of rays, I think I'm going to bring it right out to the very edge of the tapestry. So here's the, the hem on the tapestry. That's really, so I'm going to go from there and make me a line down to the center here. And then on the other one, this here is that same distance over here. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna start down just a little bit shorter, maybe five inches or so from there, so just so that I have a little bit different length on the sunbeams. I like a little bit of variety. And then we're gonna fold those up. I'm gonna start by folding this center, the sun part of it. Okay, let me check. I see some more chats here. So our high bid is sitting at 60. Uh, um, okay, it looks like you guys are helping out in the chat room. I appreciate that. You guys answering questions and I'll keep an eye and jump in and answer questions if I need to there too. So what I'm going to do here is just start, I'm going to do little accordion folds. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. And these are maybe a half inch tall, just little short ones. I don't have much of a run here, so I'm just doing little short ones. And I just keep working my tapestry around so that this next line here, I like to lay this line down here, flush up with this line. And that's how you keep your, your accordion folds going straight, is just keep matching those lines up nice and straight going over the edge there. Okay, last fold on there. So now what I'm going to do is tie this sun off here and then I'm going to leave my, my string attached because then we're going to tie both of the sunbeams down to the same spot here. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Now it looks like you guys are giving some good advice to 48 hours, especially for the blacks. That, that's the one thing, last thing that I tried to get my blacks as dark as I wanted. And that has definitely helped. The blacks take a little bit longer to set up than the rest of them. So, Do I ever end up with dye in my beard? Every now and then, I usually try to make sure I keep it back if I'm working right here in front of me. But I usually try to, to keep my dyeing out there. And if I need to, I even will tuck my beard into my shirt 
but then that opens my shirt up for dye and it looks like I'm wearing one of my nicer ones. I do that sometimes by accident. Oh, I'm going to leave that attached. Okay. So for now, I'm going to just leave this here. Later, I'm going to come back and scrunch this up, but I want to get my two sunbeams going. So, and we're going to bring both of those down right here to this point and then tie those off. And that's why I left this attached just to make it easier. I'm going to move that over right to the center. Okay. Okay, I'm doing a... Uh, we got somebody just showed up, so hello Jacqueline. So I'm doing a sun tapestry. So I folded my tapestry into thirds, and then I drew my half circle and tied my sun, and now I have the two sunbeams, and I'm doing two different lengths on those. So the sunbeams, since it's a little bit longer, I'm going to do just a little bit taller of an accordion fold there. That's a main thing when you're doing a short run you can do a shorter one taller ones if you try to do a, sh a short fold like this and then when you tie it up it's possible you'll buckle that up and lose all your folds so I do just uh, the height of my pleats depends on how far I'm pleating and also how much if I'm pleating a whole t-shirt you know that's a little bit different too I think the high bid on the tapestry is still sitting at $60. I'll probably close that one out here soon and get started on tapestry number two, but we're still taking bids on tapestry number one. is watching in amazement. Hi mom, nice to see you. Well, I guess I'm not seeing you, but you're seeing me. It's nice to have people. Right now it shows I have 59 people watching, but sometimes my count is behind. So if anybody sees a higher count, please let me know. And oh, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, I love to help and see other people have success. And this art is fairly easy, but it can be tricky to get started. So that's why I like to show all these tips and tricks, hints and things that help me out. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down. If I try to bring it, I'm not going to go all the way down to the line. I'm going to go, it's maybe two inches away from there. And I think that's close enough. If I try to go further, it might pull more of my sun out. So remember, I left my kite string tied here. So I can run that right over. And I just bring it down and under and around. And I bring it two different ways across here just for extra support. So I wrapped it under over here and then I wrapped it over under here. So both of these here plus straight across is going to help support that. And once I get all done here, then get the other one tied in, then I'll wrap this up a little bit more. So there's the first sunbeam, that tall one. And now I'm going to get the shorter one going on. And we're going to do the same thing. So let's see. Oh, I got. Okay, yeah, it looks like I have somebody said 60 and then 63 watching. Yeah, so more people are joining in. Oh, it looks like mine is keeping up. It does say 63 on mine. Last time it, I said 59 and somebody else had 81. So. Sometimes my browser, I don't think, refreshes. Okay, so get this other beam pleated here. And let's see. Okay, and then just to go back to the bidding for just a second. I think the high bid is still sitting at $60 with Emily. So I'm probably going to close that one out here in just a little bit. So if anybody else wants to bid on tapestry number one, go ahead and place your bids. And then I'm going to close that out probably as soon as I get this tied off here. So I'll give you guys a few more minutes. <laughs> yeah, I keep moving that mouse around. I got this new mouse and it has these buttons on the side that take me back to a previous page. And... So sometimes all it takes is just bumping it or dropping my mouse and I'm off in Wonderland someplace. 
Now we'll set it over there and see if that works. Okay. Oh, thank you, Dave. He said, don't forget to like the video. So, yeah, that definitely helps get my videos ranking higher if I have more likes on it. And also, if you guys subscribe to my channel. And the benefit of subscribing for you is you get notified whenever I'm putting up a new video. Right now, I've been doing these uh, pretty regularly on Wednesdays since we've been in the, the lockdown. But after the lockdown, the live videos might be a little bit more staggered just depending on how my day is going so subscribing definitely helps my channel grow more also okay so this one here i got it down it was just a little bit hard that last pleat in there because i got all these folds going on in the same area here but we got that and like i say the other way that i fold this this one here is going pretty quickly, so I probably will do two, two of the sun tapestries with a different fold on them. If you guys are open for hanging out longer with me this afternoon. I know sometimes my videos get going pretty long. And not everybody can hang out for that length of time. But if you can and you want to, I will stay and do a, the second tapestry also. So I just kind of wrap this around different ways just to try to make sure I have the support that I need on there and then what I'm going to do is tie this off and then we'll start I'm going to scrunch up the center and get it tied off too and then we'll get this rest of it scrunched up okay okay I'm getting a bunch of yeses yeses uh, where's the bidding for the tapestry on tapestry number one uh, let's let me scroll back a little bit yeah we still have sixty dollars from Emily on tapestry number one and I'm gonna close that as soon as I get done tying this off here so any more bids for tapestry number one it's sitting at sixty dollars right now and then I'll break out tapestry number two and show that one yeah we already have a bid for 60 so you'll have to bid higher if you want to get in there Emily has the high bid at 60 right now Okay, now the sun part, I, I want a little bit more action than that. So what I'm going to do is just reach in here and open these folds up, and then I'm going to scrunch this. And the main thing I'm doing is I'm pulling these folds is make sure that I don't pull out anything from my tie line right here. So I'm just kind of opening that up so I can get a good scrunch on it. Oh, and I better draw my lines on the back side here. So, there's my sun line. Let me make sure where my... So, I'm just drawing these lines on for my sun beams onto the back side. And that will help me put my dies on. Okay. So let me take a quick peek. Looks like the high bid is still sitting at sixty dollars. Uh, tapestry number one. Let me show you real quick. I do have it over on my Facebook page on the different feeds wherever I posted this. But this here is tapestry number one. This is the first one that I dyed, and I did the little pie shapes coming out from the center. And then on tapestry number two, that's the one where I put the lines going straight. And I'll break that one out in just a minute. I just want to do these one at a time so I don't get too confused on who's bidding for what. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and close out the bidding for tap. Oh, we got a $65 bid, $70 bid. <laughs> okay, I guess that's too soon to close it out. So high bid sitting at 70, 70 for the high bid. Let me 75 for the tapestry number one. So we got a battle going on here. 80 for the 
scrunch the wild spiral number one. So I'm going to scrunch this up while you guys bid it out. 85. High bid. 90. Well, thank you guys. 95. So I'm just getting a nice scrunch on this sun right here. And then I will probably, if, if you guys have already stated that you want to see the second tapestry, maybe I'll go ahead and get them both tied up before I break out the dies. So let's see, we got 100 is a high bid from Emily. So as soon as I tie up the sun here, we're going to close out. So high bid right now is sitting at 100 with Emily. So going once, going twice, going three times, sold to Emily for $100. Thank you, Emily. Okay, so there is the sun scrunch. And Emily, let me post my link here. Okay, so here's my link. It has all of my different contacts. Uh, so there's two different ways that you can pay. You can either click on this and go to the, the donate tab, which is, let's see, about the fifth one down says Mr. Tie-Dye donation link. You can pay through there. Uh, just, it'd be 107 with the shipping on there. Or you can email me through my web store, which is the second link, or message me on Facebook. Either one of those, you can send me your email, and then I will send you an invoice. But otherwise, one of those ways, thank you and congrats. Uh, the kite string, I buy that from Ace Hardware. So it comes in these, oops. It comes in these nice big rolls here from Ace Hardware. And I just, I think I pay maybe $5 for a roll. And there's, I don't know, uh, 600 feet on there. So these last me a pretty good long time. And it's just really handy to tie with. So let's see. Okay, so I'm going to set the sun aside for now. And I'm going to show the tapestry number two. So we sold the first one already, that one's closed out. So this here is tapestry number two. This is the one that I put the lines on. I drew my, I had my circle and I just drew lines this way. And then I flipped it over and I put lines of die on this way. So this here is how tapestry number two came out. And we're gonna open the bidding on this one now. So bidding on tapestry number two. Well, I get the next sun tapestry tied up. So this one here. And once again, all of these are posted over on my Facebook page and, and a couple of the tie-dye pages uh, where I posted links. Oh, I don't know if I posted pictures there or not. But anyways, you can find them on my Facebook page. And there's a link to my Facebook page in that uh, link that I just posted there. So we already got some bidding going on, uh, 50 and then at 55. So, okay, let me tie up the rest of this sun. So I got the sun scrunched. I got the two pleats here. Now for this outer part, I'm just gonna scrunch it up and make it like deep space. Okay, we got a $60 bid for tapestry number two. Needs a TARDIS in the middle. <laughs> yes, TARDIS is one of the things that's on my list. A couple different times I almost did it and then something else came up and I didn't. So one of these days I'm gonna do a TARDIS. Uh, we have a $60 bid, or $65 bid on tapestry number two. Okay, $70 or $75 bid. 
for tapestry number two. Yeah, I love Doctor Who. Although I haven't watched the current seasons yet where we have the female Doctor. I'm looking forward to that. So no spoiler alerts, please. <laughs> Okay, we're just about done with the first sun tapestry. I'm going to start tying the second one before we get these dyed up then. It sounds like you guys want to hang out with me longer, so... Although we've only been going for a half hour so far. I think I had one of these I went on for two and a half hours. <laughs> so, we're not going to go that long today. But I appreciate you guys taking time out from your day to come hang out with me. Alright, let's tie this up and get going on the next one. There's a tutorial for the TARDIS and the Dalek and one of the tie-dye group files. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll probably do a, a stitched TARDIS myself. But, yeah, a folded one is cool too. I'll have to check that out. Uh, let's see, we got 75 is the high bid for tapestry number two so far. So, let's see. If you answered my question about a pleated spiral, I missed it. Uh, the pleated spiral, that's one that it just takes more time to do it. There, I think there is a video on YouTube. Uh, somebody made one, but basically you're twisting the center and a lot of people will use the hemostats to, to pinch. You just make sure you cover your hemostats with uh, tape or file them down. I use a heat shrink on mine because you don't want to tear a hole in the fabric. But when they pleat it then, then they're lining each one of the pleats up and twisting it. So it just, it takes some time to learn and practice. I haven't done it yet, but I'm really impressed with everybody who does do them. So there won't be a pleated spiral video for me because I don't know that I've got so many other projects that I want to do besides practicing. And that one does take a lot of practice. So, so why it's so secretive, I'm not sure, I, other than tie-dye has been secretive for so many years. And when I was starting out, I wished that there was somebody like me making videos or something so that I could learn. So in the end, I became the, the person that I wished for by creating these tapestry or these videos, just to share the knowledge so that more people can have success with this art. Okay, so I have another one of the tapestries. It's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out, so it's barely damp. And then I folded it in quarters, and I marked the center of the tapestry here. That's the main reason I folded it in quarters, is just to find the center of the tapestry. And then from there, I'm going to open this up, and we're going to fold this one in thirds also, just like we did the first one. Okay. Oh. Okay, <laughs> I keep moving things around here, and I lost my feed for just a second. Let me get back in there. Okay, there I am. X-Files would be ace. I did do an X-Files T. Uh, there was a stitch design, but I did the, the X for the X-Files, and that was pretty cool. Okay, trying to catch up with the comments here, see if there's questions. As I get this drawn out, I'm going to do another 60 degree line on this. If I can find my protractor. There it is. So here's my center line. <clears throat> I just need a bigger table to work at. <laughs> I think one of my first live videos, I, I knocked my computer off my table, just trying to push the tapestry back further. 
So this time I have a little table back there to set my computer on. Okay, so there's my line at 60 degrees. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this edge now and lay it right along this line here. So this here is the center of the tapestry folded in half. So I'm just taking one of my edges and lining it up right there at the 60 degree mark. And then I'll see if I can catch up with the, the chat here. Get my mouse out again. And I think the high bid, I think we're sitting at 75 from Mir. I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, Mir. So if I'm not, please let me know. I'll try to pronounce it correctly. Um, and buying kite string. <laughs> yeah, the kite string was a little bit difficult. I had found some on Amazon that I was buying, and then at some point there was a bad batch that went out. So whenever you unraveled your kite string like this here, it would just twist all up, meaning they didn't properly set the twist at the factory. So I used to work at the Pendleton Woolen Mills, so I know all about setting the twist properly. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I started buying it from Ace Hardware. That's where uh, the boys down at Jammin' on Love Street, or Jammin' on Hate, the store down there in San Francisco. That's where I learned about Kite String, and that's where they buy theirs from, is Ace Hardware. I keep bumping something, and... There we go. So yeah, Ace Hardware is the, the place that I've been buying mine from and having the most luck. I've gone in before and they were out of stock and they told me that they could order it for me. And then they ended up finding some in the back room, so it was fine. But yeah, Ace Hardware is, sounds like they're pretty good about keeping theirs in stock year round. Okay, I think I'm gonna use the same measurements as before. So I made my son right at 10 inches, but I'm going to mark this outer line here so I know where the edge of my tapestry is. This here is this edge here, just folded underneath there. So let's see here. see somebody asked if my T is an eclipse yes this here was my eclipse design when we had the eclipse here a few years back so I did the the Sun blocked out with the two quarter or sliver moons on there so I did a whole bunch of these during the eclipse time and sold a whole bunch of them before I even had made the first one so that was a lot of fun everybody enjoyed these Okay, and I'm going to take a quick peek to see. I think the tapestry number two is still sitting at $75. So we'll let that run a little longer here. I'm going to get this one folded up. Like I say, we're going to do this one just a little bit different. Although I'm going to do the same measurement there at 10 inches for my son. We'll get the circle drawn on and then I'll draw the the sunbeams on. Like I say, what I do is I just do a little slip knot. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, have you ever got dye in your beard? Yep, every now and then I'll get just the little bottom tips into the dye and when that happens I usually try to wipe it off and then tuck my beard into my shirt. But usually in the summertime, my lady will braid my beard for me. So pretty soon you'll probably start seeing me with a braided beard. And that keeps everything back out of the way too. 
Okay, so for my little partial circle here, I just put pinch the kite string under my finger down here at the center where I want to start the circle at. And then I just kind of pull back a little bit until I'm lined up right there at the 10 inch mark. And then just holding everything, holding the string tight, holding the pin straight. You want to make sure you don't tip the pin as you're going because then you're going to draw your circle a little funky. But that draws a nice circle on there whether you need just a little partial one or you need a full half circle. Uh, it's pretty easy to pinch those and hold that off with just a string, whatever kind of string you have, whether it's kite string or sinew. They both work great. In the past I've used like a, a dinner plate and set it on there, but you have to kind of find your center and everything and it was just a pain. So the circle thing with the string is just perfect. Uh, who does the braids? Uh, my uh, braiding my beard, my lady does that for me. So it's something that she does that every morning for me. Keep it up out of the way. Usually in the, the summertime because my neck gets hotter in the summer and so that just keeps it up off my chest. Oh, hello, Crystal. Good to have you make it here. Yeah, um, I have some pictures on my Facebook with my beard braided. So you can ask me about that. Uh, send me a message or whatever if you want to see pictures. And I can find those for you. And that way you can show him and see if he likes it. But yeah, probably within the next few weeks I'll probably start having my beard braided so I'll have that out of the way can't wait to see what these look like when we do the reveal these ones after I dye them today they'll sit for 48 hours uh, so probably Friday is when I'll get around to getting the getting them opened up and washed and yes I will do a reveal video for them not a live one but I'll do the video in the morning and usually by the afternoon I have it up okay so this one instead of bringing the the beam all the way down here to the Sun where we had it I'm going to put my mark a little bit further up and then we're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna draw my beams at two different lengths so the first one is gonna come all the way up this here is the the inner side of my hem here this here is the outer side so I'm going to make a mark from there down to my line. And then this one here, I'm not going to make them quite as short because I still want to make sure I have a, a beam shape. So it's just going to be just a, a few inches shorter. Draw that one down. And now instead of bringing them down here and tying them in here, I'm going to fold across and then I'm going to go out this way and try that tie that as straight as I can coming out the the side there but I'm gonna go ahead and tie the center of the Sun first and then I'll get to the beams here the... Uh, somebody asked how do I get my string to stay taut when I tie I don't think I start it properly it comes loose I want crisper lines uh, as far as getting the, the string to stay tight I usually will wrap it two or three times around there before I try to tie it if you wrap it just one time then it is harder to get it tight and you'll see that here in just a minute as soon as I get this folded so we're gonna do the shorter pleats on this one here because I only have just a short run to go And somebody says they're using rubber bands. They haven't found string. Uh, they trust not to bleed the dye onto the item. Yeah, that's the one one thing about the, the kite string is that the dye can run along that. Usually what I'll try to do if I see dye hanging out on the string when I'm dying is I'll take a, a rag and just kind of touch the string down to the, the tapestry or I can use my cuticle pusher and push the string down and that'll help soak some of the dye up before it runs along the line. But I've also had it happen where I'll put dye on and it'll run along a rubber band and go into an edge, an area. So I've had it happen both ways. Uh, the 
the main thing is just find what you are comfortable working with. For me, I like the way kite string works. Uh, I use rubber bands for probably 10 years, and the kite string has just been a whole change for me and how I tie things up. But if you're good with rubber bands, then I say stick with the rubber bands because that's the main thing is finding something that works for you and you're comfortable using. Okay, so for the string, like I say, I'll wrap it around here. Let's see. Yeah, so I did that three times there. And then when I'm tying, it's, it's staying tight right there. So I don't need to try to hold that while I'm tying my knot. So that's my trick for doing that, is just wrap it around like three times. Okay, so now this one, since we're going to tie this one here differently, I'm going to go ahead and cut this from right here. So this is going to change the look of this sun just a little bit. Now this one here, I'm going to do bigger pleats on it because we're going to go all the way across here. So that's going to be a little bit longer of a run. See what else we have going on. Oh, thank you, Saucy Mare. Yeah, she likes to, she likes it too because then she can see my jawline. She says when I have my beard down like this here, it's like I'm hiding. So, yep. I, I like them. I like it braided. Uh, I would love to hit like that on your videos, but I don't have a like button at the top of the chat. Where else can it be? If you're watching on your phone, sometimes there can be just a little tiny arrow off to the side under, and you click on that, and it will drop down another little menu bar with your likes and share and save button on there. So you can try that, but other than that, I'm not sure. Uh, usually, like I say, or sometimes there's the three dots that you can click on and see the extra buttons on the videos. Oh, Tina, hello there. Glad to see you. Her, her, number, her name is highlighted there because she's a, a member of my channel. So she pays a monthly subscription to help support my channel. So that's much appreciated. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, have you ever used gasoline oil in your dyes? Yes, I used that. I bought a big jug of it from uh, Dharma. And what I usually will do, I have a little plunger here that I fill up with the oil. And then I put, I think it's 15 drops into a 32 ounce bottle of dye. So whenever I'm mixing the dye up, I'll just squeeze that, I'll put my powder in and I'll squeeze some of the gasoline oil in. And what the gasoline oil does is help break the surface tension of the tapestry and help your dyes soak in. Uh, that was something I learned from Jeremy a few years back. I was working on the tie-dye labyrinth. I don't know if you guys know about that. Anyways, I did uh, over 100 panels that were 10 feet by 7 feet. And then I made a tie-dye labyrinth down in California. Well, those, the fabric that I bought, I bought it on giant roll. <laughs> Had to be trucked across the U.S and unloaded with the forklift and then I had to pull the pieces off and cut them in eight. Anyways, the fabric wasn't the best fabric for dyeing, so I was having a hard time getting the dyes to penetrate and soak in. So I chatted with Jeremy a little bit and he said that the gasoline oil is one of the things that will help the dye soak in further. So I started using that and it did help. So I just always use the gasoline oil now. So I just like I say, 15 drops in the bottle, and it's good to go. So, oh, Merritt, thank you for joining. It looks like you must have joined up to be a member uh, during this video. So, thank you, thank you. I appreciate all of the support that I get on this channel. Okay, let's see.
see what else I have. I've made so many beautiful tie-dyes, thanks to you. I even have my husband asking me to make him one. Oh, that's awesome. I am glad to hear that, and I'm also so glad to be able to help you with this. Like I say, tie-dye is just a, a fun way to relax. You get to create t-shirts that are unique. So whether you're making for yourself or making them to sell, uh, I just, I love it. I started doing it 20 years ago, and I haven't stopped. <laughs> I'm just completely a, a rainbow guy. So... Anyways, I'm glad to be of help to you, so you're welcome, and thank you for coming and watching and hanging out with me today. Is there much difference between flat and round can you consider getting some round to replace kite string? Um, I am not sure just how much of a difference there is. I used some of the round ones and I didn't care for it much because it didn't it didn't seem to lock in the same way that the flat sinew does. But uh, that was the main thing is I was wanting to use this sinew. Uh, using it in place of kite string, that's, that's a possibility because it, it's not going to act the same way. And I have heard that the, the round sinew I didn't try this myself, but I've heard that you can split that so you can double it up. So you just peel it apart and then you can peel it and then wrap it on the two different rolls and double it up. So, yeah, you can go ahead and try that or some other people might have some more information for you on this, the, the round sinew. Like I say, I, I just had very little experience with it. I didn't like it, so I moved on. Thank you for all your advice. You're welcome. Like I say, I'm glad to be of help to everybody. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I know I've had a few people say that they've tried to do it, and I don't know if it must be on YouTube's side. Uh, so I'm glad you stuck with it and got it to work. I Like I say, I appreciate all the, the members that support the channel. Okay, so I just finished folding all the way across here. Uh, I forgot to tell you guys when I was doing that, that corner there, it's just one that, it's just a matter of taking whatever line is laying down on the ground and folding it flat up against the line that's coming down here. And that one there, it just folded. You can see the extra little crease that I made here. I just twisted it around. So, and I think once I get this tied up here, then I'm going to close out the bidding on tapestry number two. So let me go back just real quick. I think we're still sitting at 75 for the high bid from Mare. Mare? Mir? I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> yeah, I see 75. I haven't seen a, a higher bid. So uh, right now, 2 o'clock was the time she bid 75. So if there's been any other bids higher than that, that I don't see, please bring them to my awareness. But otherwise, when I'm done tying this up, then I'm going to go ahead and close the bidding on tapestry number two, and we'll move on to number three. Let's see, I like the colorful badges with this membership. Thank you. Yes, I, I just took uh, pictures of my different tie dyes and made the badges with them. Eventually, I'd like to get some more professional looking badges made up, but at the time I didn't have the extra money to do that, but I think I might be ready to play a little bit more with that. I just need to find an artist to, to create the, uh, I think they're called emojis or whatever. I think the badges are what you get for the membership and then the emojis is what you use in the chat. I think that's how that works. Anyways, I plan on getting some professionally made up at some point. But for now, just the uh, tie-dye ones is what I have. I'm glad you like them. Like I say, once again, I appreciate all of the support for this channel. It definitely helps keep me going on making tie-dyes and tapestries. And this tapestries on Wednesdays, this has been a lot of fun for me because I love to do the tapestries, but I don't take as much time to do them. I'm busy making t-shirts. So...
Wednesdays has been my tapestry day. So thank you guys for joining me for tapestry day. Or tie-dyes with Mr. Tie-dye. Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-dye. I got all kinds of names. What else do we got going on? I want membership. Yes, uh, for membership, if you, right below the video, there's a join button. You just click that, and there's three different options I have up. And you just pick one of those amounts and sign up that way. And if you decide you want a different amount, you can send me a message, and I can create another one with whatever amount you want in there. So let's see. Let me try splitting it. Just got. Yeah. Yeah, that'll, that should work. <laughs> Have fun splitting that out, and that way you get double use out of it. Carl, tie-dye is your day job? Yes, I've been doing tie-dye um, as a business for 16 years now. Um, when I first started doing it, we had a, a store, and we just were adding something else, another handmade gift to the store we had. And it all of a sudden, it was a book and candle and gift store. And within six months, it became a tie-dye store because it was so popular. So we moved to a location downtown. We had opened it in our house. And the funny thing is, we opened it in Pendleton, Oregon, which is a rodeo town. <laughs> but there must be a bunch of old hippies around there because they really love the tie-dye. So I had that for... I think a year in Pendleton, and then we moved to Legrand, and we had it for another year there, but it just didn't do as well in Legrand, so we had to close it, but just because we closed the store didn't mean I stopped doing tie-dye. I just kept on making it, and then eventually I started my own business, and I did a bunch of school events. I think the school events is what really helped set me up perfect to create these videos. So, I've done all done tie-dye in all different kinds of ways and just had a lot of fun with it. I've done music festivals, I've done the Saturday markets, uh, holiday markets, craft fairs, and I've done teaching a couple different times. Uh, there was a company that had me do a video presentation uh, in their leadership course. And so I traveled to uh, South Dakota, I went to Montana, uh, Warm Springs, Oregon, and Utah. So four different places I took business trips as Mr. Tie-Dye. So that was a lot of fun. They paid for all my travel, my hotel, per diem, food, all that stuff. And then they also paid me to do tie-dye. So I mean, that was just a bonus. They bought all the supplies. Of course, it was just quick speed turnaround trips, but... It, it went pretty good. I, I really had a lot of fun doing the, the tie-dye that way. Anyways, let's get on to the next question. Why did you take the folds out of the sun? Uh, I like, uh, with my son, I like uh, to have the, the effect that scrunching gives to it. So I scrunched up the sun part, and now I'm scrunching up the beams. And that just gives what... For me, a sun just looks all fiery, you know, and the scrunch just really pulls that out because I'm going to layer a couple different yellows on here, an orange, and then a red on top of my sun just to make it really burn brightly. Let's see. Oh, welcome, Ara. Glad you made it to a live video. Yes, we're still folding things up. Um, I've done two suns. I did them two different ways. So I'll be dyeing them in just a minute here. And we're also doing the bidding for the Wild Spiral Tapestries. And I think I'm going to be closing out the bidding for number two here soon. Um, I don't see any new bids. So the high bid for Tapestry number two is 75 So if anybody else wants to place the bid go ahead and get those in soon because as soon as I tie this up then I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and we're gonna start the bidding for number three so 75 is the high bid on tapestry number two right now and that's with mayor so thank you for your bid
I just posted recently that I'm not weird, I'm just a limited edition, so. <laughs> Thank you, Saucy Mare. Yes, I definitely have a, a lot of years into this, and the schools, I, I've probably tie-dyed with, I would say, close to 10,000 kids since in the last 16 years. And that has been just a, a great joy. And like I say, I think that's what really helped set me up to do these videos because I'm used to having 25 kids standing around my table as I do tie-dye and I'm trying to explain to all of them what I'm doing and why and answer all of their questions. So it really helped set me up perfect to, to do these videos because right now I have uh, what, it says 59 people watching and I got questions I'm answering and I'm doing tie-dye so multitasking is definitely fun it's not really my forte but in this instance it is because I've had 16 years of practice so uh, let's see what else we got going on here never Colorado uh, nope I didn't get called to Colorado I was going to uh, they were going out and doing leadership training on the reservations Indian reservations so that's the different places and they just they called me up and say hey do you want to go to South Dakota and I'd pack my bags and off we go although I guess I had to prep everything ahead of time and then mail it ahead so that it was there when I got there uh, love your tight eyes. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, this is my new therapy. Yes. Uh, lots of people have been liking the therapy, so that's why I just keep on doing this. And people say my voice is relaxing, so they say they can put me on in the background and just kind of meditate to me almost. So that's always nice to hear. I'm glad that I can be of help in that way. And also teach you guys how to improve your dyes or start dyeing or even just think outside the box a little bit. Try something new, something different. And I love seeing the pictures. I get pictures and stories from people all over the place. I recently had a woman uh, on Instagram contact me from France. And so I kind of helped through just message talking. Uh help her figure out how to do the t-shirt design she wanted to do. So, yeah, I talk to people from all over the world. I think I'm just rambling on now. I don't know if somebody asked me a question. <sighs> yes, uh, it, I did have a lot of parent teacher helpers with me when I went into the school so I didn't have to try to manage classes of 25 kids by myself but yes the kids definitely you need to be right there and we help them you know with the folding process and then help them with the dyeing process and move them in move them out let's see Brandon says hey thanks for the dye referrals you're welcome glad to be of help once made sock monkeys for an after-school club, so all so kids all around had to teach them to sew first. <laughs> yeah, you gave them sharp objects. I just gave them wet, messy ones. <laughs> Luckily, though, this kind of dye wipes up easily off. Of, most of the time, I was in a, a gym, and so if there was any dye spillage, it wipes up easily off of sealed floors. So it wasn't too bad. And I've done it outside with the kids and done them in the classrooms. So just whatever seems to work best. Oh, we got Emily King as a new member, it looks like. Thank you, thank you for joining up. I appreciate the support. I love you guys all. Thank you, thank you. Especially for just coming and hanging out with me here on Wednesday. Okay, we just want to get this tied up, and I don't think I've seen any new bids come in. So I think we're going to close out the other tapestry here in just a minute at 75. That's tapestry number two. And then we'll open up the bidding on the third one. Let's see. Where do you get your kite string? It seems to be really hard to find. Yeah, uh, Inferno answered that. Thank you. 
Uh, Ace Hardware is the place. Doing a fitted sheet. Do you do it the same way? Yeah, fitted sheet. Uh, what I usually try to do is fold, you know, I fold it in half by tucking two of the corners into the other two corners. And then I bring that those two corners over. So I basically have the four corners tucked in together. And then from that point, then I lay it down and kind of smooth everything out. And then you can do your folding. If you want to do this exact fold, you might need a little bit of help just to get the... Uh, you can fold it in quarters pretty easy by yourself. But folding the thirds is a little bit trickier. But yes, I would do it the same way. It's just a matter of getting all of that stretchy fabric worked around there. So if you need help with that, just make sure you ask somebody or... You just have a big enough table, you can spread the whole thing out and just take your time with it. But yes, a fitted sheet, you can tie up the same way, just a little more of a hassle. Uh, where do you get your kites? Oh, no Ace Hardware in UK. Um, yeah, for the UK, I'm not sure. Uh, you might check on Facebook, ask in some of the tie-dye groups, uh, see if there's anybody else in the UK. I, I mean, I know there's other dyers, but whether they use kite string or not, uh, sometimes it's just a matter of asking around on the pages, or you can even just go over into the, or the groups. You can go into the search bar and just type in kite string UK and see what comes up that way. Okay, so this one here is all tied up. Both of these are ready for dye. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set this aside, and I think I'm going to close out the bidding. The high bid for tapestry number two is at 75. So I'm going 75 once, 75 twice, 75 three times. Okay, sold for 75 to Mare. So. And once again, I'll put my, my link up here for you, Mare. Someplace, here it is. Okay, and within this link here that I just posted in the chat box, uh, there's a couple different links on there. You could either just go direct to the donation link, which is like the fifth one down, and pay the uh, 75 plus 7 shipping is 82 and make sure you include your address someplace or you can go to the email through my store or message me through Facebook one of those links and send me your email and then I will send you a message and I guess the other thing is just to make sure is the, the 75 or the seven dollar shipping is in the u.s if you live outside the u.s then i will need to have you send me your shipping address and i will figure shipping for you so yay mayor okay you're welcome thank you i appreciate you being here and for bidding on my tapestry Okay, so before we get started putting the dies on, I'm going to open up the bidding for tapestry number three. This is the one that I folded it in quarters. So there's just one of them. And then you open it up and there's four total on this last one here. So if I can get it all the way opened up. This is the one, like I say, I folded it in quarters and then I spiraled it and dyed it that way. And we've got nice spirals all the way around here. So, and there we go. There's the fourth one. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the bidding on this one. And we'll close this one here after I'm done dying. So for the rest of the video, you can bid on tapestry number three or wild spiral number three. So thank you for the first two winners, Emily and Mare. And we got a first bid from Gwen at 50 on tapestry number three. Oh, I need some gloves. Let me grab those. Okay. And let's 
let's see. Oh, we went right to $100 from Tie-Dye with Ernie Cox for Tapestry number three. Thank you for the bid. Okay, so I'm going to dye this one first. This is the first one that I tied up where I brought the beams all the way down to the center here, or to the sun edge. And I'm going to put this on one of my towels here. Just because I have so many layers of fabric, uh, put it on a, a clean, dry towel. In fact, let me fold this in thirds. What this does is it helps soak up any moisture that comes out of the bottom of the tapestry. So it's actually going to help try to pull the excess liquids, whatever bits of soda ash are left, it's going to pull that through, but then it's also going to try to pull the dye down through just because this here is dry and this here is wet. So the fabric, the dye is going to want to move through and go into the bottom. So I usually will just put it on here and kind of press it down a little bit. And then since I have so many layers of the sun and the beams here, I'm going to dye just from the top until I can actually see color coming through on the bottom. So that way I make sure that I'm not getting any uh, soda ash trapped in the middle, which what that would be then would be white space. So to avoid that, I dye until I can see it coming through to the bottom. And that works if you're doing uh, the same color, the same dyes on the top and the bottom. If you're doing a DNA, it's a little bit harder to do that. You have to kind of judge a little bit. And that one, you might open up the cracks to look for the, the white space to see just how far the dye has sunk in. But Whenever you're doing it the same way, you can just put them right onto a towel and dye until you see the dye coming out the bottom. Okay, let me catch up with what's going on here. Looks like we got a bid from Gwen at 105 for the tapestry number three. Uh, I've been waiting for this one to come up. Yeah, <laughs> I've had, I think, more comments on tapestry three than the, the other ones. So maybe I need to do some more of those. Uh, let's see, Mr. Tide, I love that towel. Yeah, this is just one that I use for just soaking up dyes and slowly they, they turn into this here. These used to start out as white rags, but years and years of working in the schools, uh, they just turn into this kind of a rich, dark brownie color. So this here eventually will go there, but right now it's this pretty rainbow color. Okay, so I'm going to line my colors up a little bit. So what I have here is lemon yellow, and then I have daffodil, but my daffodil was just a little bit too orangey. So I added uh, lemon yellow dye powder into that. So whenever I mix this up, it just makes it a less orangey gold. And then we're going to put some orange. This here is deep orange, and these are all from Dharma. And then I'll put a little bit of fuchsia in there and a little bit of fire red in there. So those are my sun colors. And then for the outer edge, I'm going to use cobalt and black for my space. And maybe I'll put a little bit of purple in my space also just because. Okay. Let's see. some procyon dye colors so can't wait to try it out be my first try with it awesome yeah you're gonna love these new colors uh let's see hello to Rimsey. nice to see you with the procyon dyes do you mix it the same? Is there a difference? Uh, the same as what? Uh, I do have a video on how I mix my dyes. Um, basically, you just need the, the powder and the water, and I use a, a blender for mine, and I, like I say, I also add the gasoline oil. Sometimes I will add uh, urea in. Urea is a wetting agent, but it's not required. Okay, yeah, the Dillon, uh, I'm, I've never used the Dylon dye, but I have heard that it is similar to the tulip dye here in the U.S. and that it has some soda ash in it. So those dyes, I recommend mixing them right before you're going to use them. 
Uh, these ones here, they don't have any soda ash in them, so I can mix these up and have them around for two to three weeks before I start losing color on them. And just to make sure how long, I, when I mix them, I go ahead and I put the date right on the bottle. And then I can check that and know that my dyes are still good or if I need to add another scoop and blend them some. So, let's see. We're on auction number three. Yeah, I'm just auctioning off just the, the three tapestries that I dyed during the video. So we're on number three, the one that had the four spirals in it. Uh, oh, Dharma doesn't deliver to Italy. Oh. You'll have to check around and, you know, maybe do search for Procyon dyes and see if you can find some place. I know there are places in, in Europe that sell. Um, I don't have a link handy, but you can message me later or you can go over and look on the Paula Birch site. And she does have links to where you can find these dyes in Europe. So maybe you'll have luck with some place that, in Europe that will ship to Italy. Had fun with the blender today. Yep, the blending that I used to shake these, and that just took forever and ever because the number of colors that I mix up. But blending makes it quick work of doing your dye mixing. How big is the tapestry? It's uh, one of the Sunshine Joy tapestries, and it's about 56 inches by 56 inches, or 58 inches, I think. Or 54. Anyways, it's 54, 56 inches to by 58 inches. So it's almost square. Uh, UK Union Jack flag. Somebody wants a tutorial. Um, I can put that on my list and take a look at it. And if I can do it, I'll add it on to my list. So let me make a little note for myself over here just to make sure. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look at that later, and if it's one that looks like I can fold it, then I will go ahead and add it to my list. And let's see. <laughs> yeah, I, I said if, if somebody really wanted tapestry number four and made me an offer I couldn't refuse, I would sell it, but... Yeah, that one, uh, so far nobody has offered anything for it, so I'm keeping that, but hint, hint. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, the blender, it, it, the, I, the hand blender I use is quite powerful. I can pick up my die cup with the blender, so yeah, and that makes really nice work. You have to be careful though, sometimes if I blend for too long, the spiral will start up and the dye will start spilling over the edge. Oxy, auction 3 tapestry size. Okay, I, I think I answered that earlier. It's the 54 by 56 inches or 58 inches. So, let's see. Okay, I think I'm caught up. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting some dye on here now. So, what I'm going to start with is... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to... I'm not going to outline this one. I'm just going to color this one here with just my my colors. So I'm just dying right along my my line here for my sun, and then I'm going to go out along the edge here on my beams from that center spot. And normally I start a little bit back from the line, but on this one here I do want just a little bit of radiance. From the sun to come out from it so if I have just a little bit extra coming out that's fine most times with images I will outline them with the black but this time I decided I want just the bright Sun to be shining through I didn't need the black outline in there 
And like I say, I'm just going to dye these from the top. So I'm starting out with the, my lightest color first, and then I'm going to slowly layer the other colors on top here. And what I like to do is, is squirt one color on and then let it set for a bit so that it can kind of sink down in there before I start putting the next color on. A friend of mine wants a Scottish flag and I have no clue how you even start fold. Okay, I'll look at the Scottish flag also and see if I can do a video for that or give you some tips. Some of them, I can easily fold them. It's just a matter of me taking a look at that, so I'll check it out later. Uh, how much difference does using globber salt over plain table salt without iodine? Is it worth waiting on an order from Amazon? Um, that, I'm not positive. I haven't done a comparison, but I have used regular table salt. I've used the globber salt from uh, Dharma and I, I currently now buy salt. It has a different official name to it, not Globber Salt, but I buy that off of Amazon. So if you got the same link for me, then uh, it's that salt is just a little bit finer. So I don't know if maybe the difference might be the the way that it dissolves. Or I'm not completely positive on the effects of the Globber Salt compared to plain table salt. Um, so you can, I would say, you could try using the plain table salt while you wait. I don't think it's going to be like a horrible thing. It just might not work quite as well. We got a 110 bid on tapestry number three. Uh, yeah, the Scotland flag, it's not showing up. It's showing up just as black, so. <laughs> yes, thank you, David. I remember that. That was the first towel that I sold. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I let this yellow sink in just a little bit. I'm going to put a lighter coat, meaning not quite as much of a darker yellow. This here is my daffodil with just a little bit of lemon yellow mixed in. So I don't put quite as much of that on. And we'll let that sink in a little bit. White cross on a blue background. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I do have an X video that I did. That might be what you're looking for. You can do a search for that on my channel. And if that's not it, then I can go ahead and look uh, at the flag when I'm done with the video. Let's see. Okay. So the high bid for tapestry number three is sitting at 110 right now. And I'm going to just take a little bit of a peek. I can already see some yellow coming through here. So I think I'm going to be just fine with my colors here. I'm just going to layer the rest of these on. Uh, like I say, I start out with my lightest color first, so that was my yellow, and I put that on really nice and heavy. Then I did a light coat of my daffodil, and now I'm going to do a light coat of orange. So each success successive color, I put a little bit less on it, uh, so I don't cover the whole thing. And that's just my preference. You can dye it how you like, but I, I like just a little bit of colors when I'm doing my layering. So now a little bit of fuchsia, and then a little bit of red. And then sometimes just to get all of those colors to blend a little bit, you can take your yellow, your lightest color, and just squirt a coat over that, and that just adds some extra movement down in there. Because it's going to take those darker colors and kind of wash through those and I don't know it just it gives me a little bit of that look of uh, ice dye not completely but 
without doing an ice dye, that gives me just a little bit of that look to it. And I think that's going to look good. Yeah, I, I can see color coming through. I might need to add just a little bit more right up next to the lines here. That one there is looking good, though. So I'm just going to put a little bit more yellow on right up here next to the lines and let that soak down inside while I dye the rest of this out here. Let's see. White cross and blue background curl. Okay. How much dye does the bottles hold? These bottles here, I have 16 ounce bottles, but I also have some bottles that are at eight ounces, some bottles that are at four ounces, and these ones here, these bottles, all these big bottles I bought from Amazon, these ones here are Dharma. These ones here with the fine metal tips on them, I bought those on Amazon. And I think on a bunch of my different videos, there is a link to those, but I can uh, put a link to those in this after I'm all done. And then I also have my 32 ounce bottles here. This is what I mix my dyes up in, and then I fill the smaller bottles with the big ones. Because I usually go through enough dye in a two to three week period of time that they get refreshed all the time. Okay. Can you do the Ireland flag or Canadian flag? Once again, I'll have to look at those. I can't, in my mind, picture what they look like at the moment. So I will check those flags out, and I'll let you guys know later. If, if I can do them, I'll add them onto my list. Have you done any superhero logos? Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. I've done Superman and Batman. They were both uh, stitched designs, and I haven't done a Spider-Man yet. But I have done a spider. Um, if you look on my video, I've got a bunch of videos that have spider in the title. But there is one that's actually a spider that I folded on a t-shirt. I did a Black Widow spider. Is it true the bottom color kind of seals? I've seen a video on with colors on black. They put colors on, let sit for hours then went back over with black. Um, well, if you, yeah, if you let them sit, then those colors are actually batching and bonding. Uh, so then when you go back over them, that means that the surface area is more dry. And when then you put the black on top, then it doesn't seem to soak in in the same way. If you put your colors on and then add the black immediately, you kind of mix some liquid there together. So if that makes sense. So waiting a little bit does help. If I'm going to put black on, I'll usually wait a bit or I'll put it on the thick black dye and I'll paint it on. But since I have so many layers of fabric here, I can't just paint thick black dye on because it would only be on just the outer layers. So it is one that I would need to, if I was going to put black on, I would have to do that. And I, like I said, I'd probably let it sit for at least a half an hour. But if you let it sit for six hours, then yeah, the other colors have started to bond in there. And, and that's probably uh, works within the, that process really nicely of letting the, the dyes bond a little bit before you add the black. I don't know if I fully understood the question or fully answered it there, but that's what I got right now. Do you prefer using liquid more than ice? Um, that has been my preference. I've been slowly playing with ice dyes over many years and just haven't taken the time to really perfect it. I do like the, the colors that you can get from the ice dyes because they, they split out. And then I also like the, the way that the ice dyes run just a little bit and just kind of creates movement within the color to me, the, the, the layers of it. So I really do like the look of uh, the ice dyes. And I am going to be playing with them more. So, but yes, ice dye or liquid dyes has been my preference for many years, and it's I think slowly shifting. So we'll see how it goes. I've done a few ice dye tapestry videos during this live stream on Wednesdays, so you can go back and find those. But I'll probably start doing more of them. 
Okay, so I'm putting on the cobalt right now. This here is the, the lightest, well, I guess my plum is the lightest of the dark colors, but I want the majority of the, the background to be in this darker blue color, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, plum purple in, just for some pop, and then I'll coat the whole thing with black. So I'm leaving just a little bit of white space. That's what I'm gonna fill, where I'm gonna fill in the purple at. And like I say, I'm also making sure to get that extra bit of dye right on here because when I flipped it over, I could see those two spots right by the line where I did my pleated folds. The dye wasn't soaked all the way through yet. So as I go through and add my other colors, I'm going to keep coming back and adding a little bit more to that so that I can soak in there. And hopefully by the time I have this all dyed, I'll be ready to flip this over. Okay. Uh, do you use mathematics when figuring out your designs? I think it's just amazing how you figure this stuff out. Yes, uh, math does get used. I, I use my protractors a lot, and I've done some different sacred geometry uh, tapestries with the folds and stuff, and they, they do take just a little bit of math to get things measured right, get things angled, so... Yeah, math does come in handy when doing some of these, but you can also just kind of eyeball it if you want. You don't have to use math and the, the protractor. You can eyeball it if you want to also. Uh, Brandon has a Spider-Man in his videos. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've seen that. How many items do you make on an average week? Um, it... That kind of varies. I mean, some weeks I might make just 10 or 12, and there's other weeks I might make 25 things in a week. Um, a lot of what I, I'm dying up now is uh, custom orders, and then I do uh, some of my own fun dyeing where I can experiment, but it depends on how many orders I have come in. I've been kind of cutting back on my orders just because uh, last year, I think it was last year, anyways, I sprained my wrist, so I can't do as many of the stitch designs as I used to do. So I think that's part of my shift over into doing the tapestries. The tapestries is much easier for me to work with, with my wrist the way it is, compared to the stitch dies. So I just kind of shift my focus depending on what I'm doing, and that then decides. There's other weeks where I might only do five tie-dyes in the whole week. I'll do dye one day. So, yeah, it can, it can vary on me. Ireland, uh, just vertical green, white, orange. Yeah, the Ireland sounds easy enough. <clears throat> the Canadian one, oh, yeah, that's right. The, it has the Canadian leaf on there, the red leaf. Yeah, I think the, the Canadian flag I can do. I appreciate you guys helping answer some of these questions in here. I'm getting a little bit behind, so let me try to catch up while this soaks in a little bit. Is it possible to dye on a gray shirt? Yes, you can add darker colors to it. If you try adding yellow, it's going to, you know, come out. The yellow is going to still be there. It'll just look a little bit muddy compared to what dyeing on a black, uh, white shirt. But yes, any shirt that the main thing is just needs to be lighter in color to add a darker color to it, and it needs to be cotton for these types of dyes to work on it. So, and there's a lot of times where I will start with a colored shirt and then just add color over top of it. shirt you're wearing looks terrific. Thank you. This is my eclipse design. We had our eclipse, I think, was that 2017? Anyways, yeah, this was the design that I came up with. And then I also like the fact that it, it looks like the, the goddess design, too, the triple goddess. But this here is the eclipse sun and the two beam, the two uh, slivers of the moon there. 
Chauncey Mayor, he gives me courage. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm glad to be able to give you courage. Uh, sometimes the videos is something that you just got to get started on. I'd say the first year that I did video, I was, I, I'm a shy person by nature. <laughs> so each time, be, just before I pressed the button, I was always nervous I had butterflies. But I think it just kind of went away after a year for me that I can turn it on and just do it. The live videos were a little bit trickier once again, but after I've done several of them, they just come easier to me also. And I better catch up here so that we can get moving along here. I think our, our bidding is still sitting at 110, I believe. So if you guys want to bid on tapestry number three, the quad spiral, then you can still bid on that. I'm trying to keep track of that, but I gotta get moving along. I still have another tapestry to die, so <laughs> I get too chatty sometimes, I think. Okay, so there's my black on there. I'm gonna take a peek and see how things are looking. Yeah, I can see my dies are coming through all the way here. I still have just a little bit there. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more yellow, but I can already start to see my color soaking through on here so I think we're about ready to flip this one over uh, what salt do I need to use for black is there a specific salt uh, the one that Dharma recommends is called globber salt but I know a lot of people they just use regular salt uh, table salt without the iodine or they'll use the rock salt there's lots of different kinds, and I buy one off of Amazon that I was doing a search for Globber salt. It's got a different name to it, but it's a little bit finer salt, so it dissolves up pretty quickly. But no, I think any salt is going to help improve the yield of your blacks. Yeah, it depends on how much on the ice dyes. Somebody said that they were worried that it was going to dilute too much and come out like pastels. If you put on too much ice, that can happen. But you can also just add a little bit more dye in there. But it is there is a, a learning curve in there with the ice dyes. So I just I try to keep exploring it a little bit here and there as I, you know, practice it. And I think over time, it just becomes easier and easier. You kind of get a feel for how much dye and how much ice to add. So one of the days you might have to just break down and just try one and just see how it goes. And you'll either like it or you, you won't like it. But sometimes you never know until you at least give it a try. Okay, I think I'm about ready to flip this over and also see if I can get caught up. Oh, hey Marty, good to see you make it here. Yep, we're just getting ready to flip this tapestry over and dye the other side. Oh, and somebody said we have 73 people in the chat, so it's good to see everybody here. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. I love watching your videos, thank you. Can you do a reverse dye then add back colors? Yes, the tricky part with that is um, getting them to bleach out enough. Uh, when you're using bleach, it tends to go out to a kind of an orangey brown. You have to leave the, the bleach on longer to get it to go to a white color where you can add color back in. Uh, so far, I haven't done that. I, I bought a different product that I've been playing with. I haven't made a video for it yet, but it's the decolorant from uh, Dharma. And this here, you use. I use uh, heat, so I have a, a rice steamer. So I'll put this on my t-shirt. However, I have it folded up and I put it in a rice steamer to remove the colors. And the other one that I want to do soon is the RIT color remover. And But I just haven't taking the time to do that but when I do that I'll make a video for it also because there are different ways main thing if you're using bleach is you need to neutralize the bleach and I do have a video just show kind of a few basic things 
working with the bleach and it shows in each one how to neutralize the bleach and I show two different methods. Uh, is it all possible to tie-dye polyester? I really want to tie-dye flag for my front porch and only the blank flags I can find are polyester. Uh, polyester can be dyed. It, it, you need to use um, acid dyes with those. But I don't think the process is the same. I think you have to actually heat them on the stove and put it in there and boil it or something. I'm not positive. You just have to look. If you go over to the Dharma site and look at polyester dye, then you can get into some of the explanations and figure out just how exactly it's done. I personally haven't done any of the polyester dyeing myself. But I have looked into it a little bit because I've had a few requests for it. But it's a it's a whole different process, so I just I haven't done it myself. Okay, so we're getting the colors coated on here. So I'm just layering each one of my colors on. Let's see. Love watching your videos. Thank you. Where do I buy diet besides Walmart? I get mine mostly from Dharma. Uh, you can look them up online. Also, Custom Colors. They're in North Carolina. They sell the Procyon dyes. And I've also bought from Grateful Dyes in Colorado. So, the main thing to look for is Procyon dyes. P-R-O-C-I-O-N. Procyon dyes. Those are these. That's what these are. Uh, let's see. I tried to, doing a video and didn't get much response on it, what, which kind of hurt my self-esteem a little bit. Love all your videos. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the the videos it it takes a, a while to to catch on. Um, yeah, I know how that that goes. Uh, when I first started this, and I started getting you know people to give me thumbs down and stuff and make a negative comment, it did, and I had to really just kind of start ignoring that and realize that those aren't the people I'm making my videos for. I'm making them for you guys because you guys are the ones that love and appreciate the help that I'm giving. So sometimes you just have to try to put the negative stuff out and just focus on the positive and. For me, things got better. So, let's see. Okay. Uh, glad to catch you live. Thanks for being so generous with your knowledge. You're welcome, Shani, and I'm glad you made it. Yeah, we're just... Working on the, the first tapestry still. This here's uh, Sun Tapestry. And I have another one that I folded up and I'll get that one dyed next. And we're also doing a tapestry auction for the Wild Spirals. So, and I believe, unless another bid has come in, I think the high bid is sitting at 110 for the spiral tapestry, or Wild Spiral Tapestry number three. So this here is my space zine, so I have been layering colors in here also. So I started out with a cobalt blue, which is like a navy, and then I'm adding some plum purple in, and then I'm coating the whole thing, or just the, the space part, with black. And these others, I, I layered in three different, or two different colors, yellow and orange, a fuchsia and a red. And I still got two more colors to put on. I just wanted to get some of these space colors soaking in there and then we'll add some fuchsia in to our sun and a little bit of red okay we'll let those sit let's see Found your channel just a few weeks ago. I'd love to see your work. What fabric do you use for large tapestries? I buy most of my tapestry blanks from Sunshine Joy. You can look those up online. And 
look, there's a tab at the top that says tapestries. You click on that and there'll be one that says blank tapestries. And they have a bunch of different sizes in there. I buy the ones that say they're 58 by 58, which is what this one is. And I also like the 58 by 90. So those are the two ones that I buy mostly, but they do, I think they're limited on stock right now. They might have just four sizes in, but sometimes they'll have six or eight different sizes of tapestries. Uh, if I want really big ones, I'll buy the flat sheets from Target online. I think Threshold is the brand that I buy. And then if you want some really nice tapestries, uh, one of our local artists, not local, but one of our artists, tie-dye artist, Bo Dorsey, he makes and sells the tapestries and he uses organic cotton and I think the other kind he uses is organic cotton and hemp blend. And he sews those up in various sizes. You can look him up on Facebook. And he also puts the little loops in the corner for the hanging. So that's what I use for tapestry blanks. Or you can also buy just the fabric, buy cotton fabric, and you can stitch uh, some of your own up too. Okay. I don't see any other bids. I think we're still sitting at 110 for the tapestry. So I'll probably close that one out when I'm done dyeing this one here before I break out the other uh, tapestry to dye. I think I'll go ahead and close that bidding out. So if you guys want to bid any more on tapestry number three, that's the one with the four spirals in it, you can go ahead and put those in. Otherwise, we'll close that out at 110 here soon. Um, let me scroll through the chat here. I want to do rainbow baby vest soon because here with everything going on a rainbow has become the symbol of hope also linked to NHS worried a little should I actually use orange or just allow the red and yellow to mix uh, it depends on uh, what you prefer I like a really nice orange so I, I use this deep orange I I've done the three color rainbow spiral and mixing the, the fuchsia and the yellow does make kind of a dark orange, but it's not, not as nice as this deep orange from Dharma. But yes, you can do it that way. You don't have to, you can just mix. And I think, uh, I haven't mixed the red and the yellow to make an orange, but the, the fuchsia in yellow I know makes a nice orange or not a nice orange but it makes a, a dark orange so yeah it might just be something that you have to test it out and see what you like okay yeah well thank you guys for helping out with the orange questions custom colors yep they're got an order Okay, it looks like I'm all caught up on the chat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of a peek down in here. I just want to see if I can see any white spots down inside. I can see just little tiny bits here and there. So I'm probably going to go ahead and dump just a little bit more of my cobalt on. And then I'm going to coat this one more time, or coat it with black on this side. Sometimes it just takes letting the, the dye soak in a little bit before you add your next layer. So these kind of work out nicely when I'm doing the, the chat room because I can put a layer on, let it soak in, and then come back to it and add my next layer in there. Yeah, custom colors, they, they have the, the same nice dyes. Um, I just happened to have gotten started with Dharma 20 years ago. And they're on the West Coast, I'm on the West Coast, so it worked perfect for me. But I have ordered some different colors from custom colors, and I like to have all the ones that I got from them. So, and same with grateful dyes. The, the Procyon dyes is the most important thing to look for when you're buying your stuff.
Okay, I think we're about ready to finish this one out here. I'm going to put a layer of black over top of this. And then we'll get started on the other tapestry. Yeah, I guess I've been going for almost two hours now, so I need to speed it up and I try to get these done in under two hours. <laughs> Let's see. Carl, what is your favorite shade of blue in dyes? I'm obsessed with Bahama. Um, for me, I, I kind of switch around. I like the cerulean blue, and I also like the sapphire blue. Those have been two of my favorite. And then turquoise, of course. I, I love turquoise just as a base in there. Even when I'm using the sapphire blue, unless it, specifically I just want dark blue like on a flag, I will still put like a layer of turquoise down first and then put the sapphire over top of it. But I think the, of the ones that I've tried, sapphire and cerulean blue have been some of my favorites. So, but all in all, very happy with it so far. Okay. Is there a Facebook group? There's lots of different tie-dye and Facebook groups. Uh, yeah, there's tie-dye in. There's also dyeing to tie. And... The super friendly tie-dye group and the super duper tie-dye group. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside to batch for 48 hours. And then we'll get this other one tied up. So I'm going to go ahead and put this towel away and get a new one out for the new dye. And let's see, oh, I think I was going to close out the bidding on tapestry number three. So, let me just scroll back. I'm pretty sure that it, the high bid is sitting at 110. Yeah, Dave... McCaskey is has the high bid at 110 on tapestry number three or yeah tapestry number three the the quad spiral so if anybody wants to bid higher than 110 this is your moment to do it I'm going to close that out in 10 seconds so going once at 110 going twice at 110 three times at 110 and sold at 110. Thank you, David. You are the winner. And once again, you can, I'll put that link up here. You can either pay directly through one of the, the links on here. And the, the shipping to you would be $7, so 117 total. So you can go ahead and either pay or you can use one of the message things. Uh, I think the second one yeah, is email me through my store. And then there's the link all the way at the bottom. It says message me at Facebook. Either one of those you can send your email address to. And I will send an invoice out. Or you can just go directly into the link that says uh, Mr. Tie-Dye Donation link. That one's the fifth link down and you can just pay directly there if you like whatever works the best for you and then i will get all of these tapestries signed and out in the mail uh just make sure that everybody that won we got emily mayor and david that won the tapestries so please make sure your shipping address is included and i will get those in the mail as soon as you guys pay for them thank you guys for bidding on the tapestries thank you all for joining me on this wednesdays with mr tie-dye we're going to do this one a little bit faster like i say since i didn't bring these beams all the way down to the sun i have a, a nice channel in here to dye in and i think i'm going to dye this one just a little bit different i'm going to use just my yellows on the the outer part here I, on the sun part and then maybe i'll use my orange and fuchsia yeah, maybe a little bit of yellow in here, too. So I think I'm going to coat the whole thing with yellow to start with. Oh, I think I know what I'll do. I'll use yellow down here on this one. 
but then in my beams I'm going to use the darker yellow. So there's my sunbeams in the daffodil with a little bit of lemon yellow mixed in. Okay, let those soak in just a little bit. Okay. Yes. Congratulations to David. Thank you again for all of the, the winners and the bidders. And yes, I'll have two sons. And I also have some other tapestries. I could start trying to bring some of my other tapestries in and do them an auction if there's an interest for that. Uh, let me know in the, the chat box if you want to see other tapestries while I'm doing other videos later on. I don't have any of them here and ready today, but... I certainly have more tapestries in my bin that I can break those out if people want to bid on more of those. But otherwise, I will have two sun tapestries to auction off next week. Uh, we get an answer. Uh, let's see. Allison, I'm not sure if I s saw your question I mean how do you go about pricing your work though oh yeah pricing is is one of those difficult things <laughs> sometimes it's a matter of looking at seeing what other artists how they're pricing their work and then you have to kind of determine how your work compares to their work although everybody's work is you know completely individual you know there are levels you know where you're just starting out or you have perfected your own style you know there's there's all kinds of levels in there and I, I when I first started selling mine I think I had my adult t-shirts at $15 and then over the years you know the base price you know like for rainbow spirals and over the years uh, my price for a spiral has gone from $15 to $30 so you know, I just, over the years, I raise them up, or as my, my skill level has gone up, I raise them up. Um, so it's a little bit tricky. There is a Facebook page called Tie-Dye Selling Strategies, and you can go on there, and they have some formulas where you can kind of plug, you know, numbers in to help you try to figure out your prices, or you can talk about it. You can post, I think you can post. I'm not I'm not positive, but I think you can post something and ask opinions from people. So, yeah, pricing can be can be a difficult thing, and sometimes it's just a matter of putting a price on there and seeing, you know, what people think about it. Uh, the main thing is try not to price them too low. You know, it's easier to mark something down than it is to mark something up. So just kind of test it out there and see what kind of response you get when you price something. I'd love to see the other tapestries as well, although it feels special when we, uh, although it feels special when you will put up pictures of these. Uh, these, the sun tapestries, I'll have pictures of these up hopefully Friday afternoon. I usually try to get these washed out when, or Friday morning and then put up my video Wednesday morning to do the reveal. And then I try to get pictures taken Friday afternoon. But sometimes it depends on whether it's raining here in Oregon as to whether I get pictures taken. Because I do those outside in natural light. feels special to bid on something. Watch. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Seeing it actually be created, it, it does help. So, yeah, I can... I'll just maybe stick with just the, the created ones. And maybe I'll try to work in some others where I do, you know, two or three of the same design and do it in different ways. So I'm just trying to always come up with ideas, ones that I feel like I can work on while I'm sitting here uh, doing an auction and answering questions. If they're too complicated, I'm afraid that I, I'll get lost in what I'm doing. And so, but yes, I will come up with some more ideas and 
if you guys have some ideas about what you would like to see, but it's got to be one that, I'm not saying it's got to be super easy, but it has to be at least one that's not too complicated so I can keep up with everything. But you can suggest ideas in the, the comment section of the video itself rather than in this comment box. You can suggest those after the video is done. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add, uh, let me see, I was going to look, yeah, I got some nice yellow coming through on the bottom, so I'm going to add a little bit of this darker yellow to this one, and then I'm going to add orange out here to the beams. So just have a little bit of a different color going on here for the beams compared to the sun. And then we're going to do the same color scheme out here. Although I'm just about out of cobalt. Oh, and I didn't mix. Okay. Well, I'm going to add, make up some of my own cobalt here. So, <laughs> I ran out, or almost ran out. So, basically what I'm going to do is add some sapphire to my cobalt. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black in there. So I do this quite often. I just kind of mix colors together on the fly. And then what I usually do is I'll test them on a white paper towel to see how they look. So I just have a paper towel and a little drop. And I let it sit there for just a few minutes. And if you hold it up to the light, you can kind of get a general idea of what the color looks like and I think that's going to be decent for our sun or space here let's see do you have any luck with stars yes I do have uh, I think at least one star video maybe two I, I know I've had it on my list. I, I just can't remember how many of them I've done. But if you search my channel for stars, you should find at least one, a five-pointed star. Uh, I did that in red, white, and blue. And I might have another one. If I don't, then I do plan on doing, I think, a six-pointed star, a seven-point, eight-point. You know, I want to do some different pointed stars. Maybe I thought about it and just hadn't got to it yet. What kind of camera do you have? Uh, right now, what I'm using is just my iPhone. Um, the camera that I bought, it doesn't, uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't connect up to my computer. So, I can't use it for live streaming. I use the, that camera when I'm making a video that I'm going to edit everything and then upload it. But as far as these live videos, I use my just my iPhone. anything above extra large being charged more as a shirt costs more yes that's what I do too I I charge uh, one price for youth size t-shirts and then I charge for adult sizes from small up through extra large I charge the same price because when I buy the t-shirts they are priced at the same and then 2x 3x they're, they cost me a little bit more, and then, of course, there's a little bit more fabric, so I charge $5 more for a 2X and 3X, and then the 4X, 5X, they cost a little bit more, and, of course, they're larger, so I charge then uh, $10 more for the 4 5X t-shirts, and long sleeve, I charge $5 more for those if I'm just kind of tying them in, you know, basic design. But if I'm going to do an extra special design folding the sleeves separately from the t-shirt, then I charge $10 more for long sleeve. So yeah, really it comes down to how much time, how much effort 
you're putting into your tees to help you kind of figure your prices out. So let's see, we'll put purple on. Or this is plum. This plum is my purple. And this is one of the colors uh, I've been using. There's a few colors in the rainbow that I've been using for the whole 20 years. I mean, I've changed a lot of colors out here and there. But plum, uh, emerald green, and my deep orange, my three secondary colors of the rainbow, they're all ones that I've been using those uh, since... I think not the very beginning, because in the beginning we mixed our colors. We bought just primaries and mixed them. But then over time, uh, probably within a year, I started buying the secondary colors because it was just easier. And I just love the, the deep orange, the plum, and the emerald green. Let's see. All of the bidding done. Yes, I have went ahead and closed out the bidding on the three tapestries uh, that I tie-dyed last week. So those are done. The, the next, I guess, if, if there really is interest in one more tapestry auction, let me break out the last one. So this one here is a bigger tapestry. This here is one of the 85 or 58 by 90 tapestries. I folded this one in half. I didn't dye this one on video, but I dyed it right afterwards. So it's got the wild spiral. This here is just one of them. And like I say, it opens up into two spirals. So it's a double spiral. You've probably seen pictures of this on Facebook. So this one here, I was going to keep it, but there seemed to be some interest in bidding on it. So I'm going to put that one up for auction also. So if somebody wants to bid on that tapestry, you can go ahead and do that now while I finish dyeing this sun. And we'll auction off the, the fourth tapestry right here too. So, Andrew, that's uh, the last one. If you want to bid on that one, like I say, I, it's not one that I died on camera, but it is one that I died soon. Do you believe you have a Metal Star video? Oh, yeah, the Metal Star video. That one uh, where I use these. Well, I don't know where they're at right now. But, yeah, I use the Metal Stars and I clamped to keep white areas for my white stars. Let's see, why do you poke the t-shirt to push the pleats down? Uh, yeah, I use the cuticle pusher sometimes to arrange my pleats so I can kind of poke them down in there just where I want them. The other thing that I use it for is kind of using it to open up to look for white sp spots. So I can see that I still need to add more dye down in here. Um, but yeah, a lot of times I just use it to arrange my pleats. I can get them so detailed with my fingers and after that the cuticle pusher will help me kind of press and arrange them. So, And it's got a nice smooth edge here so that's nice. Um, some people they'll use a screwdriver and they'll kind of grind that down and make it the end of the screwdriver smooth. But yeah, just something that you can kind of push down in there with. That makes it nice. Okay, and Andrew started the bid off for the double spiral tapestry at $80. Thank you, Andrew. So we'll go ahead and run that one until I'm done dying here. I need to add a few more colors, but it looks like I, I do have a few spots here where the color's coming through. This here's looking pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit more white or yellow right next to this line here. Okay, Carl, is that your dog? Oh, no, <laughs> I sit right here in front of my open window, and a neighbor's dog was walking by here and barking. 
Uh, thank you. Is it tie-dye in your final wash after batching? How many tapestries wash at one time? Um, depending on what size there are, I might wash four or five tapestries. Like this size here, I'd probably wash four or five of them at one time on a full load. If it's the bigger tapestries, then, you know, three or four, are, you know, it just depends. I don't like to have my washer completely filled up with fabric when I add my uh, water in there. Uh, so I like to have the washer maybe half full of fabric or ta tapestries or t-shirts or whatever just to make the washing easier. If you if you fill it too full of stuff then you end up with more of the, the dark water and it just seems to take longer than just doing a couple smaller loads. Okay, let me catch up on these and I'll finish dyeing this. Now I see you poking with the bottles. Oh, the bottles. Okay, yeah, the bottle, once again, that's just to kind of poke some dye down inside. It's a, a habit of mine that I picked up at the beginning of my tie-dye career, and <laughs> I've tried to break myself of it. I just, I always do it. So I've had some people call it the, the Mr. Tie-Dye Tap, because I just, I kind of tap the dye down inside there. So I'm kind of squeezing the bottle as I'm pushing and squeezing it down in there. So the that's just part of my my habit, my process. You don't have to. You can squirt it just on top just fine, but you can try the Mr. Tie-Dye Tap if you want. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. Where do you buy your blank white clothing from? I can find cotton clothing online, but they're all colored or expensive. I buy mine direct from a manufacturer. It's called sandmar.com, but mine, it's, they are wholesalers. So you have to have a business license or at least a business name. In Oregon, they don't require us to have a business license, but I did register Mr. Tie-Dye with the state. And then from there, uh, I signed up with Sandmar and I buy now wholesale through them. But there's also, uh, I think, Jiffy Tees, uh, Alpha Broder. Um, there's a few different places. And if you go to some of the tie-dye pages and just do a search on there for t-shirt blanks, you can usually find people who have their places of where they buy from. But it's a matter of finding you know, a manufacturer or a t-shirt place in particular to get them. Oh, nope, I, I don't have a dog right now, but I have had chihuahuas, um, I've had a schnauzer, and let's see, what else was, I don't remember, those are the two that I remember right now, and that's, well, I guess somebody's walking their dog and somebody else's dog is barking at it. <laughs> Do you have a favorite t-shirt for dyeing? Uh, no. <laughs> I try to wear my older t-shirts, but sometimes I sit down with a nice one on and I just try to be careful with them. But I don't have a particular favorite t-shirt that I wear all the time with dyeing. Okay, I'm going to add some fuchsia to my sunbeams. And maybe I'll add some red to my sun just to give it a little bit more fire in there. And then we're going to layer some black over top of this space here. I think that's soaked in enough. And I think I didn't see any other bids yet, but $80 I think is the high bid on the double spiral tapestry. Well, the bid's already been opened up at $80, so if you want that, feel free to bid. I can make myself another one. <laughs> uh, where did you buy your... Okay, I got that one. I want to know this dog. I like it, Carl. Mr. Tie-Dye Tap. I'm all for the tie-dye tap. I usually poke it in and squeeze the bottle, but I don't poke quite like that. Uh, 
surprise me, we have Staffies. Staffies. I'm not sure if I've heard of that. Uh, I thought. Uh, oh yeah, I thought. Uh, Fruit Loom Teas or uh, Gildan is the brand that I buy. But yeah, they, they you have to just kind of search around different places to find the t-shirts. And like I say, the tie-dye pages, there's a lot of people on there that if you kind of ask the general question or maybe even go search in the files. I know some of the pages prefer you go search first. Um, but yeah, you can find different places to buy the, the blanks from. I feel bad bidding on the one you want to keep, but since it's the start, <laughs> it's okay, Gwen. Like you say, I, I couldn't make one. I just, it was not one that I, I did on camera, so I wasn't, I was going to keep it for myself, but there seems to be a lot of interest in these wild spirals, so maybe I'll have to do another video with wild spirals. So we got a hundred, uh, oh, 110 now from Andrew. Oh, Stafford, Staffordshire Bull Terriers. Okay. Um, I think the question, which do you prefer, which comes out best, or there's no difference? Um, I guess I don't remember what that question was. Let me scroll back a little bit, see if I can find the question. Oh, which one do I like best? Okay, you're talking about t-shirt brands. Um, I kind of, years ago when I was doing this, the Saturday market... I kind of searched around and found uh, different t-shirts. I tried, um, well, I don't want to name a bunch of brands uh, just because, but as I searched around, the Gildan t-shirts seemed to be the ones that I liked the best. Uh, they had pretty consistent sizing to them, and I, I had one brand that I got funny small necklines on them, and I've had some that seemed like they were kind of lopsided of course this was years and years ago so they could have changed and that's why i don't want to name any brands out there but i found the gildans they were a nice heavy weight the gildan ultra they're 6.1 ounce and so they're a nice weight t-shirt and i figured the amount of work that i put into a t-shirt i wanted to last for a long time for the the customer so the the gildan has just been the one, they've been consistent in their sizing. Uh, so when you buy a large t-shirt, you know that you can buy a large t-shirt. Uh, some of the brands, they run smaller. So I just, I've stuck with the the Gildan the whole time, but I know everybody has their, their favorites for different reasons. Some people like a lighter weight one. Some people like one that are a softer fabric. So it might be a matter of going into the store and just kind of checking, feeling some of the different brands and seeing which ones you like. Okay, we got a 110 bid for the tapestry. Uh, okay, so we're going to start dyeing this other side here. And we got the tapestry sitting at 110 right now. Okay, 125 from Gwen on the tapestry. Uh, good to know I bought new ones that were inconsistent, it seems. Oh, in the seams. Yeah, that's, I, even with the Gildans, I've had some that had, you know, an issue with the seams, but I called the manufacturer and they sent me replacement ones. I don't think there's any t-shirt that's going to be completely perfect all the time. The main thing is just find one that works for you the best and for the longest. And for me, that just happens to be the Gildan ones, but there's lots of good brands out there. The ones you're doing look fab. Thank you. 
yeah, like I say, those are all the Gildan. Unless somebody specifically orders, you know, a lighter weight T-shirt, I use the Gildan Ultras. Um, some of the tall tees now, I can't find them in the Gildan, so I have switched over. Uh, I can't think of the name, but... And then some of the women's tees, uh, if they want like a V-neck or something, I've ordered off-brands for those. But Gildan has been my consistent one probably for 15 years now. Okay, 150 bid from Andrew. Let me get to see Tapestry 4. Can I see it? Uh, yeah, let me set this aside here. Tapestry 4 is uh, larger than the other ones. It's 58 by 90 inches, and it's got a double spiral on it. Of course, I can't get it all the way into the frame here, but I'll get half of it in so you can see one of the spirals. But it's a wild spiral like the rest of them were. Just got to be careful that I don't get any dye on it. <laughs> so there's the, the spiral. Like I say, there's two of these. So it spirals out there in the middle into each of the two spirals. So, and there is a picture over on my Facebook page. You can get to my Facebook page easily. Let me copy this. You can go to this link that I just posted, and if you click on that, it'll open up, and there will be a whole list on there, and I think about number eight, it says Carl McClellan Facebook page. That's where you can go and click. I posted a link to this video there, and then in the, the, the comment section, I posted pictures. Well, I guess I only posted the first three, but you can click on my photos, open up the May album, and there'll be pictures in there of all four of the tapestries. Okay, so we got a $150 bid. Oh, okay, we've seen that one. Great hoodie. Oh, thank you, that's, yeah, that's my my hoodie. I'm gonna do a tap a video on that one soon. Oh, we got a $160 bid from Gwen. Thank you, Carl. Take care, everyone. See you. Oh, okay. See you, Brandon. Thanks for joining us. We're just about done here with this one, and we'll wrap up the auction here soon, too. But, um, like I say, Friday, I will be posting a video of the results of this, so you guys can check back. And then, of course, next Wednesday, I'll be back here live again. This has been fun hanging out with everybody. So, let's get this the rest of the way dyed. Okay. So basically I'm just dyeing the, the top and the bottom the same way. Since I have more layers in there, it's harder to, to dye one side one way and one side the other because it will make the tapestry uneven. So when I have many layers, I try to dye the top and the bottom in the same type of fashion just to get the evenness through the tapestry. Okay, we got a $165 bid from Andrew. Thank you, thank you. I need to get out the bottles and sell some more great videos. As always, glad to see people are buying. Oh, yes. Thank you, Alan. And thank you, everybody, for bidding. And thank you for just hanging out with me. Like I say, this has been a lot of fun to do on Wednesday afternoons. And we're coming up on 4 o'clock here in the U.S. What time is it in other places? I know in the U.K., the, the the video was going to start at 9.30 in the evening, so let's see, 9.30. Some people might be up at 11.30, going on 12 o'clock over there, 6.55 in Michigan. Okay, 
Let's see, where, oh, I was going to put some red there and fuchsia here. Yeah, 11.55, yeah, so <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Saucy, for hanging out with me. <laughs> I, I'm going to try to get some earlier ones, but those might be up sporadic. I might have just very short notice on those other videos that I will try to start like at maybe 9 o'clock in the morning here to make it a little bit earlier for you guys. But thank you for coming and hanging out with me, even when you have to stay up into the wee hours of the night to do it. 455 in Utah, Trinidad, oh Trinidad, wow, I got people from all over here, I love seeing a variety, and our high bid is still sitting at 165, so let's see, 7 in Michigan, night owl, okay, well that's good, <laughs> all right. So I'm splashing a little bit of red onto my sun here. Let me get some more yellow going on in there. And I forgot to run my red dye down through there. Basically what I'm doing is I put red dye on and then I run yellow over top of it. And that helps that red soak in more, but it all kind of mixes with the yellow and changes. So there'll be just... I'm hoping for some fiery action going on there. So, and I think I'm going to do the same thing with this fuchsia. We're going to squirt that in. And let's do the front side too. Sometimes I forget to do both sides the same way. Okay. It's six o'clock here in Texas. Glad to see so many people from all around. And I think we're about ready to put some black on this and then call this one good. So I'll be wrapping up the auction also here. Uh, to be clear, fuchsia is a pink. Yes, it's a very dark pink. And if you add just a little bit of yellow to the fuchsia, then it turns to red. So can't wait to see this washed out. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about them too. I love experimenting and playing with things in different ways. This is the first time that I've done a sun this way. Usually I have just the petals that come off. So I like this here just kind of came to me as I was deciding upon a sun. So that's why I wanted to have two tapestries ready because I figured you guys would want to see another one and hang out with me a little bit longer. Okay, this is ready for black now. So 6.57 in Georgia, 7 p.m. in Pennsylvania. So people from all over the place. Yeah, I love layering colors together. So typically I have two or three colors in a range. So if I'm going to do blues, I start out with turquoise. And then I will layer in some cerulean blue and then some sapphire blue or cobalt over top of that. Just depending on what I'm going for, the look. But I love the look of the layered colors. And that's something that you get out of ice dyes, which is why I'm really anxious to get in and play with some more ice dyes. In fact, I just bought myself an ice shaver so that I can have some shaved ice to work with. So I'm excited to do an ice dye now. That just came in yesterday, or a couple days ago. Okay, so there is my sun tapestry. I'm going to let this one batch for 48 hours. And like I said, I'll wash this one with the other one. And then I'll do a reveal video on these next week, or <laughs> at the end of the week. Boy, has this time just slide, slid right by? I mean, it's almost 4 o'clock, but it seems like we just barely started. Okay, so I think we're going to close the bidding out. I think I started to do that, and then I forgot. So Andrew has the high bid at 165 So I'm going to close that out here soon let me check the comments you do special orders um, I do some special orders I'm kind of limited on what I do but you can send me a message through one of these links here let me post that again so here's a link and there's two or three different ways to message me so let me 
see who asked the question. I lost the thing in my feed. Oh, do you do special orders? Okay, Louis, Louise. Yeah, so there's a, I just posted a link there and there's two or three different ways that you can message me through either through my store or through my Facebook pages and tell me what you're wanting for the special order and then I can let you know. Like say I'm doing a limited number of special orders just depending on how it works in with you know my wrist for one thing but with my videos and my other orders so I do love to do special orders. Uh, like the eye shaver when you batch that now will you lie it on the towel no once when i'm batching now i put them in this tub here and it's got this rack i found this rack in the uh clothing not clothing department but the closet section of uh home depot and it came in i think an eight or a ten foot length and i cut them down to size they do have a lip on one side here. This side here is flat, so to keep them level, I cut a couple pieces of PVC pipe, three quarter inch. I set those in there, and then that makes my rack level. Then any excess dyes can drip straight out of here. It does come with the lid, so it makes these tubs stackable. So in the winter time, I stack these next to a heater vent in my back bedroom so that they all get a little bit of heat and in the summertime I can pick these up and slide them right out on my roof of my shed so they sit in the sun and add a little bit of heat because that always helps the dyes set up better. Uh, let's get these off, my hands are all sweaty. Okay. So yeah, I don't I don't like to batch them on the, on the towel because that can, as it pulls more dye through there, then it can spread, and I don't want to take a chance that it's going to spread to other places. So I do the towel just to help pull the dye straight through while I'm working on it, and then it goes on to a rack. Uh, can hardly wait for your, I, yeah, me too. Because <laughs> the, the shaver, it looks like it's going to put out almost like a, a snow-like ice. Uh, I've always just done my ice dyes with big cubes, but there was one time we had enough snow out here and I was ready for it that I went out and I scooped up a bunch of snow and it just seemed like the snow, the way it melted, it just gave a really nice consistent uh, consistency to the melting on my tapestry. So anyways, uh, somebody had put up a link on Facebook. They had these on eBay. I think it was $40 with free shipping. So anyways, I will try to find that link and I'll post it in the description of this video when we're all done. But yeah, the eye shaver is a really nice deal. I haven't used it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I was wondering what the benefits of ice dyeing was, so it gives a variety of colors. Yes, the, uh, the different dyes that you get, they, they come, when you mix them up in the liquid, of course, it makes one color. But to get the colors here, they mix several different colors of dye into them. So when you do an ice dye, you put those on, and then as the ice goes through, then it splits those colors out. So the cobalt, where I do liquid dye, comes out blue. If I do an ice dye, there's probably going to be, you know, maybe like some fuchsia and some couple different shades of blue, maybe some black. You know, it's going to be different colors in there that make up this, and that all splits out in the ice dyes and gives just these fantastic colors and to me it just looks like movement you know like water flowing but it's colors on your t-shirt so but it does take some practice to get it down and there's a bunch of people there's a tie-dye page I think an ice dyeing uh, Facebook page that they have uh, probably some charts that show how different colors split out so there's a whole learning process. I've done a few basic ice dyes where I just kind of sprinkle the dye on and just go for it. But I want to get more precise with it. So I'll be playing and practicing with that more. Okay. I think I, a couple times I've started to close out the bidding and I keep forgetting. So I think I'm going to close it out right now, and then I will check for more comments. So I have a high bid of 165. So 165 going once, 165 going twice, 165 going three times, 
And I don't see any more comments. So sold. Congratulations. I think it was David, wasn't it? Let me scroll back and look. Oh, no, Andrew. Andrew. Congratulations, Andrew. You just won this tapestry. So once again, you can... Here's a, a link. And on that link, there's a donation, Mr. Tie-Dye donation site, where you can just pay directly. Uh, it's $165 plus $7 for shipping, so it would be $172. Or you can send me a message. There's, I think, three different ways to message me on here. And you can message me, and then I will send you an invoice for that. So whatever works best for you. But thank you, Andrew, and congratulations. And thank you, all of the bidders. Thank you for all of the participants in this. Whether you just watched or you asked questions or you helped answer questions, I appreciate and love you guys all. And go out there and spread your love and light and rainbow colors out across the world. Make sure you keep in contact with your friends and family. Tell them that you love them and you're thinking about them because this is a difficult time for everybody. And uh, let me read, check to see if there's any more questions and then I'm going to close this out. Have you heard of people applying soda ash after dying? Yes, I have done that. Uh, the soda ash just needs to come in contact with the cotton and the dye at some point before you batch. So some people will soak their tap before they dye or before they fold it. Some will fold it and then soak it in soda ash. And some will fold it, uh, dye it, and then add the soda ash to it. And for that, what I usually will do is I just put... Uh, some soda ash in just one of these little squirt bottles and after I get it all dyed I'm not, of course not going to do it right now but after something's all the way dyed like this here then I would just go along and I would just coat the whole thing just like I would coat it with dye and then I would wait let that soak down a little bit and I flip it over and then I would do the other side really quickly and let that soak in and then I set it aside to batch for the 48 hours and that gives just a little bit of a different look to it also. So you can kind of play with the, the soda ash when you apply it in different ways. Most of the time I'll pre-soak my stuff because that just works the best for me. But I've done it all different ways. Uh, yeah, and the candy style, he, he does adds the soda ash after quite a bit. So I've done uh, some of the candy style and I've added it that way, but I've done it for other designs too. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Carl, for all your help. You're welcome. Keep doing what you're doing. I plan to. As long as there's interest, I will be here doing videos and stuff. Congratulations to the winners. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you and uh, for all you do for the tie-dye community. You're an inspiration. That's wonderful to hear because my goal is to help or inspire people. Help people think outside the box. So you're welcome, you're welcome. I just got here. <laughs> yep, we're all done. <laughs> yes, you gotta learn to clean your house later. <laughs> uh, but I will be doing another one of these uh, next Wednesday. And if I can manage to squeeze another time frame in on a different day, I will do that. And I will try to give as much notice as possible. We do have some people here from the UK that they're hanging out. It's after midnight right now for them. So I will try to get some in earlier for you guys. So, okay. Thank you all. Uh, let's see. Maybe you could show us how to tie-dye a tie-dye mask. Oh. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't got into doing the masks. I, I have so many other things I do that the masks isn't one of them. But my mother-in-law, she is making masks for her community. And she gave us some. So that's what I have. So thank you all. Namaste. Peace, love, and light and laughter to everybody. Have an excellent day, and I will see you guys again soon. Love you.